Galileo Project freaking slaps. It slaps hard here at the beginning of 2023. It has put a lot of other games uh, coming out in 2023 on notice. From Sorry, We Are French, Hatchet Board Games, Combination, Distribution, coming out very soon, already at retail at a bunch of places as well. What do you need to know about this one? And why am I that freaking excited about this game? Because it's freaking that good. Let me tell you why. Let me run you through it. Let's see. This is a two to four player action and resource management style game. Sounds like everything you've heard before, right? Well, yes and no. It does it in a way that is just ultimately very, very pleasurable. It does it very smoothly. It makes it thinky. There's not too much overhead, but there is a disturbing lack of clarity sometimes with the symbology. And that's probably the biggest detriment I will tell you right now at the beginning of this video is that symbology in this game is not as intuitive as I wish it was. That is the biggest criticism I can tell you right there. So if you are willing to get past some uh, just difficult to understand symbology, in order to make this game language independent that it is, that is the biggest criticism I will say right at the beginning. Right here is the board in front of you. There's a lot going on on this board. You can't even see what's over here to the right of the cards. That's where you keep a couple of the different resources that we'll talk about in a second. But the basic gist of it is you have your own individual player board here that you'll see that has four different moons on it. And each of these moons are going to be tracking various representations of values based on armor from robots that you're building and setting out in next to each of the four of them. And as their armor or as their value totals up, you move your little resource tracker around the outside, which upgrades your abilities in various ways, but also plays into the end game scoring. Sounds simple. Relativistically speaking, it is, but the thought process that goes into this, the great thing about a game like this is the layers that are there without needing to overly complicate the actual mechanisms of the game itself. And that is few and far between, right? Like that's why I like games like Res Arcana. I'm not saying this is like that, but it gives me a similar sense of, I have at the core, very simple concepts that I am taking on a turn by turn basis, but how I choose to do so, the order in which I choose to do so, the combination in which I choose to do so gives me ultimately the most control over the majority of my chances of winning or losing. And that's what this game does for me. On the board here, you've got several things. You've got goals that are gonna give you end game scoring conditions. You've got technologies that you're going to upgrade. You've got areas across the board here where you are going to be drafting or buying robot cards up to five in the top row and then character cards up five in the bottom row that are not only going to have abilities at the top of the card, but also abilities at the bottom of the card. They're going to be different colored. So why does that matter? Well, this middle scoring track here that keeps track of one of your currencies, your influence is going to dictate which one of these that you get to do or when you can do them. If you're not on the right track, you can't activate that power. And so on the top, it's a one-time bonus and you discard the card. On the bottom, that's an end game scoring that you tuck under your board. You can only have so many of those. Oh, wait, how do you get more of those? Well, that's where this comes in, right? That I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, the concept is relatively simple. At the beginning of the game, your marker is somewhere along this influence track based on the asymmetric starting values that you are assigned or that you draw. And then you are going to do one of several different things here. You are going to first have the ability to manipulate your token from one track to the other. That is first. Then you can choose to purchase one of three different things that I just alluded to. You can get a character card, which they are free. They give you the influence on the left side of the card. If you are on the right track, you take this side. If you're on the right track, you can take this side. You get to choose depending on how you allocate things. Or you can buy one of these robots for the value in the upper left-hand corner here. So for example, this one cost me six along the red track. And so I would have to have six or more if I cannot mitigate it with one of my special abilities going back to the moons again, right? You can see how this is starting to be interconnected. These 
these robot cards again can only be played at certain moons. It gives you the ability to play this only at the yellow moon unless you have the ability to fill it in later and switch it. But you'll notice that some of these actually have two different moons you can choose from. They also have this starting value according to how many uh, basically spaces that you will be moving along the track when you line them up the outside of these moons in the first place. Now this game would be relatively straightforward if we didn't add a couple other layers. The other layers that you're going to notice are we have over the side of here, I'll slide this board over so you can see a couple different resources over here. You have the rarest of the resources, energy. Then you have these tokens, which are by far and away the nicest poker chips I have ever seen in a retail game. These are rivaling or even perhaps better than the original Splendor tokens if you have those. Then you also have these upgrades for values. And what happens with these is you can allocate this or you can allocate some of the other moon tokens, if you will, that are all the four different colors that you get one of each, and you can change the values on these robot cards. So for example, I could change that one to being at the yellow or the gray now, if I add that there, and if I have this one here get played on the board on my turn or on my moons, I have the ability to now play this and upgrade its armor or its value by one, essentially. So then in this case, it's now valued at two, which is again going to progress my track up here, depending on which moon it's at by an additional one. Now, the tricky point is you can't ever upgrade more than one of these per card so you have to choose very carefully how much you want to upgrade it by because this is the last element of things that you need to be aware of you'll notice that several of these cards here if i pick them up and show them to the camera a little bit closer these central abilities of both of these robots have x's in the middle meaning the more of these cards or these robots you have on your board already the more powerful they are and that cannot be discounted because all of a sudden, this one that gives plus X value, you might wanna to wait to put it on one of your lower value ones to get it to the highest value that you can because like I said, you can only do that once, right? On the bottom of the top of both of the tracks, you'll notice that there are modifiers. So if there are cards over here you want, they're gonna cost you extra. So seven plus one is eight. That's gonna cost you eight influence. Then down here, this gives me four influence on the track, but, it's on the minus one spot, so in this spot, if I take it, I only actually get three influence. So there is some value there, depending on how you wanna do it. Did I mention layers? Well, I'm not done talking about layers yet. The other layers that you're gonna have is you have another action track over here that corresponds to these satellites. The more of the satellites you have, the more options you have along the satellite track to choose the bonus you want. Then you also have four technology cards. Each technology card has two different sides, two different values that you can investigate and get upgrades with. And you can choose A and B sides. It doesn't need to be all A or all B, so you can mix and match, giving you many different options. And that gives you a total just there of 20 24 different combinations you can have just with the four of these. And then we have about eight or nine of these different objectives that are end game scoring conditions, goals, if you will, that you can fill out up to one per turn that is not included in your three basic uh, options for your actions. And those are going to give you victory points as well. That is the layer upon layer upon layer that I was talking about. The game ends when either you run out of the character card decks and again, the character numbers depend on the player count. So you will remove some of these at the three and four player count to make the two player game not nearly as long. But all of my games so far have been decided actually by the other end game scoring condition is that you have 10 of these robots assigned to your moon. So how you allocate them, how you move them around, how you decide to distribute them will not only affect your in-game powers, but they'll affect your end-game scoring because each of these as well, you'll notice, have stars on the inside track next to the powers that tell you how many points they're going to be worth. So that cannot be understated as well. So it's a little bit feldy in there with how many ways you're going to approach it, but it's not overwhelming. It's not just, you know, throw everything elsewhere. There is some strategy to it. There is some dynamic to it. And again, it's just a freaking lot of fun. It's slightly brain burning, but not overly analysis paralysis dependent, which is why it fits a very, very sweet spot for me of the next step up that I don't have enough of in terms of games that fit that niche.
The last element that I didn't talk about that's there as well is you have these generic cards that you have the ability to build up to four different robots throughout the game that are going to all start with a generic two value that can be upgraded. And they're also going to be able to be put in any location because they have two blank slots for the moons that you can potentially allocate to. And of the four robot types that we talked about previously, you have the ability to allocate one of each type potentially to this card so you can build four completely unique completely asymmetric robots to compared to what's in the deck but also compared to what your opponents are doing let me just give you one quick turn example so you can see what the flow looks like of this game and the combo and the connectedness that i was talking about and then let me give you a few final thoughts on this at the end here so if you take a look at this you can see that right now i have five influence on the blue team and it's on the red side of things right and so let's say i want one of these cards well i have several different options right if i have any of these resources i could allocate before my turn or the beginning of my turn to switch over to the blue side so if i take a look at it i say okay let's take a look i can pick up these two reds down here which are going to give me modifiers for the robots either the moon modifier or the robot modifier to customize one of the custom robots if i really want to or I can go up here and buy robots. Now I'm on the red side, so there are only two robots that I can buy, the six or the seven. Now I only have five resources. So if I want to get the six, one of the abilities that one of the moons offers me is the ability to pay two of these credits to reduce the cost of the robot Y1. So if I paid two of these credits, I can grab this robot. This robot has this symbol, which means it's going to give me one of these resources, and then it gets placed at the yellow moon. So I would allocate it over here. Its value is three. So my marker, wherever it was at, would go one, two, three. I would get one of these energy tokens. So I get one of those automatically. And then if I had the one of these, my only other option right now would be to get just the top level of this one, one energy. But if I had more than one of these satellite cards here, I could get either one energy, three influence uh, card, or even two of the other chips or three extra influence. So the more you have, the more options. You don't get to choose them all. So if I have two of them, I don't get to choose two, but it gives me more variety, more influence, more uh, pivoting, depending on what my strategy is. And so you can see, maybe I wanna get two energy. And like I said, these energy are the most valuable resource. So now I have two of these pink energy and these are very valuable because next turn, I can potentially buy one of these other technologies that are hard to get at the end because that's the main use of these in the first place. This one here getting me a victory point and allowing me then to choose immediately one of the first four robots off of the top of the deck and just allocate one wherever I so choose. That is how you're stringing things together and how it goes. Final thoughts? This game freaking slaps. Like I, This is not doing anything tremendously different, but it's just doing it in a very engaging, enjoyable way. There could be some analysis paralysis depending on your player group because some of this situational combination that you can see with the red and the blue on both the top and the bottoms of both rows of cards but ultimately there's not as much there as it may appear. The biggest downside, like I said at the beginning, is some of these symbols are just not freaking intuitive. They're just not freaking easy to understand the first time around that you play this game, and you're gonna be flipping back and forth in the rulebook. Now, I will say the rulebook lays it out completely. It tells you what this one is, it tells you what this one is, it tells you what all of it is for every single card, lays it all out in the rulebook very, very precisely. So as long as you don't mind flipping back and forth the rulebook a few times in your first game, or more than a few times your first game. At no time did I feel like I could not find an answer very easily in the rule book. I just went back there more times than I would have chosen, personally speaking. That being said though, that's the biggest issue. This game is a keeper. This game is going to be on people's top 10 lists of the year. I will tell you this right now, February of 2023, eight months from now, 10 months from now, people are gonna be having this. And if they don't, that means that the rest of the games this year were better than this. And if you tell me that there are gonna be 10 other games that are better than this by the end of the year, this is gonna be a freaking amazing, amazing year of board games. There you go. It's not going anywhere. I picked it up, I bought it. It's staying around, baby. That's all I got. Stay classy, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you have any questions about it, more than happy to answer them.
Subscribe if you want. No ramble at the end. Peace out.